Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back again together, uh, still continuing to discuss that uh, physical science and trying to make it easy for you. Uh, and I'm sure you've been enjoying, you know, the uh, many solutions that we've been providing uh, on physical science. If it's your first time, welcome to the family. Hey, where have you been all this time? <laughs> yeah. And uh, for those of you uh, who um, uh, who need assistance with mathematics or physical science, hey, please uh, join the moving train. And if you want to get in contact with us, and our, our um, email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, now let's uh, look at the November 2020, uh, um, you know, question three. All right, so I'm going to try and discuss this one with you. I love it because it's a graph. OK, and we must always be able to, you know, explain questions that have to do with, with graphs. All right. Now let's go into it. They say a small ball okay, is dropped from a height of two meters and bounces a few times after landing on the on a cement floor. They say ignore air friction. OK, so f um, first of all, by virtue of ignoring air friction, it simply means that we are uh, um, you know, it's moving under, it's it's free falling, right? Okay, it's under projectile motion. So in this case, we say, they say, define the term uh, free fall. Okay, right. And how do we define free fall? We say this is motion under the influence of gravitational force only. Please don't forget to use that only, right? Okay, um, or sometimes they say this is uninterrupted motion under the influence of gravitational force as the only force. Okay, right. Now, uh, they say use the graph and determine, right, um, first of all, uh, the time that the ball is in contact with the floor before the first bounce. Now, may I please just uh, take the time to discuss this with you before we go into the questions, right? So first of all, they give us a graph. They said uh, it's a it's a position versus time graph. So let's see what's happening there. So first, when I look at this position time graph, it seems to suggest to me that they have taken the ground as our zero position. Why do I say that? Because the initial point or where the ball starts or begins at time zero is not at zero, which would be the ground, right? But it starts two meters above, and they were they had told us that it is dropped from a height of two meters. So in this case, it simply means that they've taken uh, the ground at zero position. So right, there it is. Uh, it's dropping, and it gets to this point at 0 0.64. This is when it arrives on the ground. Now, there's a bit of a time delay. If you think about it, when something falls, okay, it's going to spend a moment, you know, of course, it distorts, it deforms, and it's going to spend a little bit of a moment on the ground. So in this case, when you look at it, it's 0 .0, 0, uh, 0 0.64 when it arrives, 0 0.67 when it leaves the ground. So it must have spent a good 0 0.03 seconds, the difference between those two, right? Okay, so then it bounces up, it goes up and reaches another maximum height, stops momentarily and then comes back down, you know, and of course there's a, another time delay and then bounces back up and then comes back and settles on the ground. Okay, right, so that is how we interpret that graph. So they say to us, uh, the time that the ball is in contact with the floor, okay, before the first bounce, uh, uh, sorry, with the with the floor before the first bounce. Now, in this case, this was the first bounce. This was after uh, it was in contact with the floor. So the time that it took was 0 0.03 seconds. So to answer to uh, 3.2.1, remember, how did we get that uh, 0 0.03 seconds? We said 0 0.67, okay, and we subtracted 0 0.64, which is the time when it arrived, okay? And we got that 0 0.03 seconds, okay? Right, and then the second question, they say the time it takes uh, the ball to reach its maximum height 
after the first bounce right so how long would it have taken to reach that maximum height there right now please i want you to keep in mind that this the time that it takes to go up there would be the same time that it takes coming down and the reason why i'm i'm stating that is because i can see they didn't give us a time there right so how long does it take to leave the ground bounce off from the ground and come back to the ground so we're going to say well that time uh so that's 3.2.2 so the time that is it, it's in flight okay after bouncing is 1.9 minus 0 0.67 right but remember um in this case that time difference that we are calculating there and uh, it, uh by the way the, the the answer there should be 1.23 seconds that's the time that it is in flight after the first bounce right but we want to know how long did it take to reach maximum height so of course it would be the uh, half of that uh, total time there uh, of flight so in this case i'm going to take 1.23 and i'm going to divide that by two and i get a time okay so uh, time until maximum height i'll say time maximum height is equal to um, 0 0.615 let's just say 0 0.62 seconds okay Right, I hope that doesn't uh, uh, distort our values too much. Right, so that's 0 0.62 seconds. Okay, that would be the time that it is in flight uh, until maximum height. Right, and then the next one, they say the speed at which the ball leaves the floor um, at the first bounce. Okay, so now we uh, want the speed at which it left the floor after the first bounce so now we know the time that it took right but what do we also know we also know that at the height there uh, when it reached maximum height the speed or the velocity was zero so let's see let's take after the first bounce we know we want our initial velocity we don't know what it is right when it bounced there but we know the final velocity if we are to consider that one that's going to be zero we know gravitational acceleration by the way when i look at this graph it seems to be a sad parabola okay so it's telling me that they must have taken up as positive right and how i know that is if you look at this graph here okay um when it was displaced when it was upwards it was at a positive two meters above the ground it was at positive two meters meaning its displacement downwards would be considered as negative okay so, so what that does is that it makes gravitational acceleration to also be negative right um, uh, but the time we said uh, it's 0 0.62 seconds and we know what was its displacement in this case so it was displaced 1.8 meters remember upwards so it must have been displaced in the positive direction okay right so now okay so even if you didn't want to use that gravitational acceleration in fact i don't think i've ever used this formula uh you know ever since i started producing the videos let me it, let's use it so 1 over 2 uh, vf plus vi okay or you can just write it as vf plus vi over 2 okay multiplied by delta t okay so we say it was displaced 1.8 meters okay that's 1 over 2 our final velocity we said was 0 we want to know what is our initial velocity okay and the time that it took us to get there was 0 0.615 okay i know i said 0 0.62 okay but i'm just resorting to that one there all right now of course all that's left for us to do is some mathematical gymnastics so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply that half 
multiplied by 0 0.615 okay uh, I get a value there 0 0.3075 and you say 1.8 divided by that value so here you've got 0 0.3075 VI which is equal to 1.8 and yeah so when we say divide by that number there okay i'm taking the inverse here okay um please don't worry about that inverse part of course you'll do it the normal way so i've got a velocity of 5.85 meters per second and keep in mind uh, it is actually moving upwards uh, at that point okay so i know that when it bounced off the ground it was moving at 5.85 meters per second by the way you can use uh, any of the other equations and see if you get to the same answer right uh, you could have used the same uh, the first one um, just remember uh, that g is negative 9.8 of course for the um, uh, for the position time graph when you see upset parabola then you know that they've taken down as positive, I mean, uh, down as negative rather, uh, in that case. Okay, right. And then for the last question, they say calculate the time t uh, indicated on the graph. All right. Okay, let me just move this to the other side here. Okay, so uh, I'm looking for time t. So remember this is when it arrived on the ground here so please remember that the velocity with which it moved up here we don't know it because this is the second bounce it's no longer the first one right um, so what I'm going to do is let's find out how long did it take to go up the ground uh, I mean uh, from the bounce uh, to get to that point there right it was displaced 1.2 meters okay um, and we don't know what the velocity is all right we know that the final velocity would be zero so let me do this because i can see that i don't have um, the initial velocity over there and probably i might need it okay um, i don't have the initial velocity but I don't have the time that it took to go up there, right? So let's find one of them. Let's find initial velocity. So what do we have there? We don't have initial velocity, okay? But we also don't have uh, the time that it took. So uh, initial velocity is unknown. What's our final velocity when it gets to maximum height? I, I want that final, that, uh, that, uh, point there as my final point of course it would be zero I know gravitational acceleration that's minus 9.8 and uh, delta y um, is 1.2 it's positive right because it was displaced upwards okay and obviously the time is also unknown so what I normally say ladies and gents is that please uh, when you use equations of motion and I'm going to show you just now Okay, I'm going to pick, because I want initial velocity, I'm going to take the only equation uh, that, of course, I want, all of those are given, but I don't have time. So I'm going to take the only equation without time, that's Vf squared is equals to Vi squared plus 2 times A delta Y. Uh, by the way, you can use uh, V squared is equals to U squared, nothing wrong with that, okay. Um, so final velocity we said it's zero remember I'm looking for the velocity this is the final velocity at that maximum height there that's zero squared our initial velocity is what we're looking for that's two times a that's minus 9.8 okay and our displacement in this case is positive 1.2 okay so let's let's try and find uh, that velocity there course you'll take that to the other side there and take put it under the square root so vi would actually be the square root now remember when I take it to the other side it becomes positive so that's 2 times 9.8 times 1.2 okay and I get a value of 4.85 meters per second 
Now keep in mind you've taken the square root, okay, and we know we've taken uh, up as positive, so I'm going to consider the positive part of the square root. Remember when you take square root, you have plus or minus, but I need to check where was my ball going. In this case, it was going up and we've taken up as positive, so I'm going to leave that as positive, right? So now we can find out the time, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to use the first equation and say, well, for my first equation, Vf is equals to Vi plus A delta T. Okay, I know that my final velocity was zero. My initial was 4.85, okay, plus 9.8 delta T, sorry, that's negative 9.8 delta T. Okay, take that to the other side. You've got minus 4.85 is minus 9.8 delta t and please keep in mind the moment you get negative time uh, it does tell you that you must have done something wrong okay so please use that as a an, an indicator all the time so i get a value of uh, time uh, as 0 0.49 uh, 4.95 looks like it's you know i can round it off actually to 0 0.5 Okay, 0 0.5 seconds. If you are uncomfortable with that, uh, you can keep it as uh, 0 0.49. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, right. And then, uh, obviously, this is not the time that they are looking for. We're looking for time t. Now, I want you to think about it. Okay, we know that we took 0 0.5 seconds going up there. How long is it going to take coming back? Another 0 0.5 seconds. However, Remember, t is on the graph, so you can't say 0 0.5 seconds there and uh, 1 second there when uh, it's been a progression of time. So it means it's 1 second from the time that we threw it off the ground. I mean, uh, that it, it, was, uh, it bounced off the ground, right? So in this case, it means that t will be... 1.97 which is that time there plus the 0 0.5 going upwards plus another 0 0.5 going downwards okay so it would be 1.97 plus 2 times 0 0.5 and that should give us 2.97 seconds that should be our time okay right and we would have gotten ourselves that 15 marks quick fast and in a hurry all right and i hope that you were able to understand that and enjoy it as well hey all right uh, you know i've been encouraged by some of you who've been telling me that you've been binging on physics you <laughs> some of you have been saying to me that you 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 can't believe that you can binge on physical science right and uh yeah and i'm glad that it's it's assisting you right and i'll see you guys again next time when we discuss another portion okay um please don't forget to subscribe and keep working hard keep making sure that you can get those incredible results and i'll see you next time shop shop